Okay, the tools I use or recommend, um, I use the Moscow State University video quality comparison tool. Um, very frequently, I use the Simplus VOD monitor very frequently, and I use the Hybrick, now Dolby media analyzer very, very frequently. The uh, thing about Dolby is they've got a wonderful media analyzer tool, but it's, it's, a, it's a cloud encoding tool, and you can't just access the, the media analysis functions. You have to use the cloud encoder, and since they charge by the month, They've got, a, you know, they've got a, a different kind of um, uh, charge scheme. It, it's, it's not, a lot of people can't use that. You know, unless you're using their, their um, system for encoding, you can't get to the media analyzer. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. It's great for me because if I need to process, you know, 100 files or 1,000 files overnight, I can just upload them to the cloud. I can, you know, let my, my AWS account spin up 100 machines. And you know I can process those those files in a very short period of time. If I tried to do that on my workstation, you know I could probably do it in like four or five days. But again, that's that's not something you can access unless you're unless you're a, a hybrid customer. So the tools we'll spend our time on are the the, the VQMT and the uh, Simplus VOD monitor. With the VQMT tool, what I do is I load the source file via drag and drop here. And then I can load one or two encoded files. And what we're showing here is the difference between constrained VBR and constant bitrate encoding. So I drag the source file here, the first process file here, that's constrained VBR. The second process file here, that's constant bitrate. And then I choose the metric. In this case, I'm, I'm using VMAF. And then I press start. And then it produces a results visualization that is, it's really critical. We'll look at how I go through the analysis in a moment, but what this tells me is the average VMAF score or the, or the per frame VMAF score over the duration of the file. And because I've got two files up here, the constrained VBR is in red, the constant bit rate is in green, and what I notice here is that there's a lot of downward spikes in the green file. So even though the scores are relatively similar, I can look at this chart and see, OK, there are some problem areas in the CBR file that probably represent um, visual quality differences that customers might notice. So the top, the top graph shows the entire files. The bottom chart shows a highlighted region here. So if I dragged my my mouse over this, it would show this region down here. So I can zero in on the frames that I want to, and then once I've zeroed in, I click this and I can see the actual frames. So I go from, you know, I go from a pure number to the ability to say, you know, hey, there's a real difference here. This is, um, this is a beta version of version 12, which is just out, and what they added in this version, for people who, who haven't, you know, people who have this product but haven't seen the newest version, is the ability to see the actual VMF score for the frames when you're, um, when you're looking at it in this mode. So this tells me that the CBR file has a VMAF rating of 47, and the constrained VBR file over there has a VMAF rating of 69. So basically that tells me, yeah, even though the average value is about the same, um, there are serious issues in the CBR file that is going to degrade viewer satisfaction with that. And then here's the CSV file. You can get your output in either CSV or JSON. That's the source file. Those are the two files we saw analyzed. And this is kind of interesting. The VMAF mean, the mean score we're seeing is CBR is higher. The harmonic mean, which takes into account the lower variability of the CBR score, we're seeing the VBR score is higher. And this is new for the Moscow State University tools. They put out the, um, they added the harmonic mean to reflect files that have a lot of problem areas. And then you can see the minimum value. That's really nice because that's a mathematical representation of the ugly frames we just saw. Maximum value. And then the location of th those two files. And then the standard deviation, which again is very valuable because the higher the standard, standard deviation, the higher the variability and the quality. So if you see it, you know, you see right here that um, the VBR file has a standard deviation of 7, the CBR file 10, so there's a lot more quality variability in that file.
And that's, a, that's another useful gauge in terms of um, how many problem areas they may be in that file. And then the variance numbers is just the standard deviation squared. OK, what do I like about the Moscow State tool? It's, it's affordable. It's GUI and command line. It's very visual. You can see the results very easily. It handles most major uh, algorithms except for Simplus. And you can read my review of the, of the technology at that bit.ly link. Um, can only compare files of like frame rate on the con, con side. So if I have a 60 frame per second source and a 30 frame per second output file, I can't get a quality uh, rating for that file. You can do that with SimPlus. It's one of its key advantages. And then from my perspective, the, the, the other thing about Hybrick, in addition to processing a lot of files, is it, it lets me download one, one CSV file that I can just populate into a spreadsheet and I'm done. With Moscow State University tool, if I analyze 100 files, I've got to open up 100 CSV files and then copy and paste the results in. So it is, I'm not smart enough to know how to use JSON to automate that kind of input, but um, if you're using CSV, it takes a long time to get So here's the Simway VOD monitor. Um, it's based on the SimPlus algorithm, which is an advancement over, it's, it's by the same people who invented the SSIM algorithm, so it's an advancement on that. Um, we saw that it rates videos on a scale that corresponds with, with human perception. Um, it's got multiple device ratings. It can compare different resolutions and different frame rates, and they're, they're here at Streaming Media West if you're interested in the product. The other thing that, and we're going to see a, a demo of this, the other thing that the SimPlus VOD monitor can do is it can, it can compute the BD rate functions that we learned a few minutes ago. So, you know, with, with the Moscow State University tool, if I want to compute BD rate, or, or they call it SimPlus gain, I have to create these CSV files, enter them into Excel, apply the macro. With the SimPlus VOD monitor, they've got a comparison mode. In this case, we're looking at the difference between um, HEVC and uh, H.264. So we've got two encoding ladders. This is the H.264 encoding ladder. This is the HEVC encoding ladder. We see that at every point, across the data rate spectrum, the blue line for HEBC is higher. This number here tells us that if you use the HEBC ladder, you're going to save, on average, about 45%. So same quality at 45% lower data rate. And this is all, you know, once all you do is select the files you want to analyze, and you can produce these numbers very quickly. It's a, it's a really good feature if you're doing a lot of codec analysis or a lot of encoder analysis. Um, you know, I talked about Hybrick a couple times already. You can get some of these numbers through open source tools. You can compute VMAF with uh, FFmpeg and VMAF Master. There's two articles on my website that, that give you the code you need to do it and, and tell you how to do it. The problem, with, um, the problem with using the open source tools is you get the numbers only. You don't get the ability to look at the files beneath the numbers. And I find that, you know, very, very critical. 